It's time to start writing some code. Let's start things off with the classic hello world example. The first thing we need to do is to actually make Vue.js available to our very first Vue.js application. In order to do that, I have opened up a browser and navigated to Vue.js.org. Let's find the installation instructions by first clicking the get started button. And then clicking the installation link in the left hand menu. Here we have various options from downloading the JavaScript file using a CDN to using the Vue CLI with Webpack and more. Some of these options are a bit complicated at first, so let's stick to the easy way and get back to the others when we have gone through the basics of Vue.js. So to use Vue.js within JS Fiddle, I'll make use of the CDN. So all I need from this page is the URL to the Vue.js file. So if I scroll down to the CDN section and click the first link, I can now simply copy the address from the page that just opened. This is the URL that I need to use within JS Fiddle. Now all I have to do is add this URL within a script tag. So I'll just go ahead and do that. And that's all we need to use Vue.js for now. With that out of the way, let's get to the interesting part, coding. At the heart of Vue.js is something that we call a Vue instance. A view instance is responsible for controlling a page of HTML code, also referred to as a template, which is then rendered in the browser. In terms of code, a view instance is simply an object that is initialized from the view constructor function. Let's now create our first view instance by simply writing new view. Like that. Now, this is not going to do anything in itself because we must pass in some options to the constructor in terms of a JavaScript object. The most important property in this object right now is one called EL, short for element. This property should contain a string value with the CSS selector that matches the HTML element that we want the view instance to control. Let's say that we want our view instance to control an element with an ID of app in which case we would enter the ID prefixed with a hashtag sign. Like so. The next thing we need to do is to start writing the template for the view instance. Since we just defined that it should control an element with an ID of app, let's create a div element with this ID. Of course you're free to use any identifier that you like or even a class if you prefer in which case you would use a selector with a period instead of a hashtag sign. So let's create the div. I'll just use a shortcut with NGS fiddle like that. Now instead of just writing hello world directly in the HTML, let's make it more dynamic by using something called string interpolation. In order to do that, we have to first shift our attention back to our view instance and introduce a new property named data. As its name implies, this is where we'll add the data that we want to be accessible within our view instance and thereby within our template as well. This property must be an object of key value pairs. Let's say that we want to store a message within the view instance. So we add a key named message with a value of hello world. Like so. But what does that actually do for us? This data is now accessible to us from within our template and we can now use string interpolation to output it. Now string interpolation is basically just a fancy word for outputting data in our template by using double curly bracket syntax as you will see now. Now I actually want to output the message so I will add a header and use string interpolation within it. Notice the double curly bracket syntax, which both opens and closes the string interpolation. Within the curly brackets, we can write the name of our data property that we would like to output, in this case, message. 
notice that we do not need to write data.message as one might have thought was required. This is because Vue.js proxies the data to make it available without this prefix. We'll get back to this in a later video, so don't worry if that doesn't make too much sense right now. The important thing is to keep in mind that the data keys can be accessed directly as in this example. Another thing to note is that you don't need to store the newly created instance in a variable. This is only necessary if you need to use it later on in your script. Alright, so let's actually try to run this code and see if it does what we expect. Looking at the right hand side of the screen, we can see that our message is indeed being output as we would expect. So what happens here is that our view instance is controlling the div, which we specified within the CSS selector in the EL property. This element and all of its childs therefore have access to the data that we have specified within the data property in our view instance. We use this when we use string interpolation to output our message within our template. Something interesting that we don't see here is that Vue.js actually watches our data properties for changes. And if a value changes, this is automatically reflected in the DOM and thereby on the page. So while this example probably doesn't look that impressive to you, there's actually a lot of things happening behind the scenes that we will go through in more details later in the course. But for now, we have just created our very first Vue.js application.